Hello Aries, welcome to your December 2020 Oracle and Tarot reading. My name is Tessa and this is Tessa's Tarot. Um, maybe some of you have noticed that my background is a little bit different. I rearranged my apartment, well my living room. Uh, I rearranged my living room and I brought my tarot table out from my bedroom into my living room because I like the space in my living, in my living room more. It's more open and I was able to feng shui it in a way that still left some open space. Um, and there's just kind of a little bit more of a social dynamic uh, and a social setting, a, sh a social atmosphere. I know you can't see the rest of my living room, but it makes me feel like you guys are here in my apartment with me hanging out, okay? Um, I think I do want to kind of like change some of what's going on in this corner a little bit and just make the background a little more appealing. Um, but I do have my Zodiac and Astrology Tapestry over here, which I kind of have been wanting to use as a background anyway. And it just wasn't really working in my bedroom. Um, my bedroom now has a little bit more space in front of my bed for me to like work out um, and do physical activities, which I really like. So this is um, this is much better for me personally. So hopefully it's going to be fine for you guys. Um, but before I do jump into your reading, I just want to make a couple of notes about what this specific December 2020 uh, tarot reading is going to be uh, focusing on. Because we did just come out of Scorpio season, and that deals with a lot of heavy, fixed emotional energy. It also deals with some like repressed emotions that kind of start to come to the surface. A little bit of um, discomfort on in the realm of like the subconscious, the unconscious. Um, you know what the things that are kind of going on within you that might not even be completely. Um, that might not be completely worked through or understood, okay? So I feel like um, with Sagitt now that we're in Sagittarius season, now is going to be a really, really good time to use some of the deeper emotions and deeper energies that maybe we felt during Scorpio season and figure out how to... Uh, how to channel those emotions into something creative, into something positive, um, and... In, in a way where you can understand your emotions and also share them and teach them in a way that can also maybe like benefit um, yourself and other people because Sagittarius energy is definitely about speaking your truth. It's about saying what you feel without really thinking. Um, for some of us, like as a Sagittarius myself, I'm trying to work on more balance. Um, but for those of you who maybe uh, bite your tongue a little bit too much and don't say what you really are feeling inside, this could be really good for you, okay? I'm, I'm all about balance. I'm all about figuring out, you know, like kind of like when you look at your birth chart, you might be really, really heavy in certain energies. Like I'm very heavy in Sagittarius. I'm also heavy in Scorpio and I've got a little bit of air, but I have no earth. So my Sagittarian energy can be extremely unpredictable sometimes and I'm trying to do a little bit more of grounding. Um, have, I'm trying to keep myself grounded emotionally and mentally and physically and all of that because I have no earth in my chart, okay? So that's kind of an example. So it also kind of depends on what your chart looks like. But I'm also kind of on this thing with my channel where I really want to use the month that we're in, I really want to start incorporating more astrology into tarot. Tarot is based off of astrology. Every single tarot card is represented by, by a zodiac sign and a planet. Um, and there's also numerology involved. Like there's a lot of different things that are involved in tarot. And as I progress and continue on my YouTube journey, I want to start incorporating more and more of different strains of information in regards to astrology and numerology and really talk a little bit more um, in depth, but also uh, just provide some more information in regards to what is how the current energies in our solar system in astrology in the season that we're in is also reflecting in the tarot in regards to your sign. I know it seemed like a mouthful, but 
I think you'll understand as time goes on. So for example, you know, we're in Sagittarius season right now. This is a reading for December 2020. We just got out of Scorpio season. So a lot of that underlying energy is still very much present. And even though there are a lot of astrological things going on this December, I'm not going to quite start talking about that stuff yet because I'm not ready. But what I am going to do is I'm is when I do my reading, I'm actually going to be using the Queen of the Moon Oracle which is really, really good for bringing up unconscious energies, subconscious energies, and things that are going a little, going on beneath the surface that are going on kind of inside of you, maybe on an emotional level. So we're going to look at some of the underlying energies that are still present um, in Sagittarius season. And then with the tarot cards, it's kind of just like part of growing. It's part of your spiritual journey to bring that a little bit more to the surface and to become more consciously aware of it so you can so you can think of creative ways to express it in a way that's to your benefit um, and in a way that other people can also relate to you know or in a way that is very expressive that's very creative because Sagittarius season is very creative and expressive and it's a fire energy uh, now is a you know a really great time to start creative projects to take risks things like that um, it can be very helpful to to bring that deeper emotional Scorpio side up to the surface and just not really be afraid to say what it is you really think. And this is why Sagittarians get kind of a bad rap uh, for being too blunt and too truthful. And, you know, I like see memes sometimes that say we're the toxic sign, but... I don't know. And maybe it's because Sagittarius comes right after Scorpio season. So after we go through that intensity of that Scorpionic energy that literally represents like death and destruction and and rebirth and those really deeper, more intense emotions. And then you have Sagittarius season, which is mutable fire. So it literally takes that energy and it just goes, whoosh, you know, it 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 brings it all out. You know, it brings the depths out into the light, okay? So that could be why Sagittarius gets a bad rap for being blunt and truthful and honest and our words can be hurtful because it's coming from this deeper, uh, it's coming from truth, from our truth, from, from the deeper energies. Okay, so the cards are pre-shuffled, so that's kind of my little spiel. My, I do apologize for looking a little wet. <laughs> my hair is wet. I just got out of the shower. Also, my grandmother, she went for a walk. And I don't know when she's going to be back. So she might just kind of creep in in this video like halfway through. So if that happens, at least now you are you kind of have a heads up. Uh, so I did pre-shuffle the deck. So let's get into it. I'm going to pull three cards from Queen of the Moon Oracle to see what the underlying energy is. Uh, so we have blossoming and Aries. I do I do feel like Sagittarius season because you guys are also a fire sign. This is this season you're gonna. I feel like the elements when when you share elements with another sign, and when you step into that season, there is definitely an an inspirational um, kind of vibe. But let's see. And Leo actually got this card too. Creation. So we have blossoming, we have creation, and we have wisdom. Ooh la la. Um, I also feel like Sagittarius season is a really, really good time to start because it is a fire, mutable, creative energy. It also involves looking at the bigger picture. And I think that it is a really, really great time to start thinking about what it is you want to accomplish in 2021. You know, what... Like, realistically, like, what is it that you really want? You know, where, if you had that bow and arrow that the Sagittarius hold, the centaur, where are you going to shoot it? What is your end goal? Like, what is your, um, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we have blossoming, creation, and wisdom. So this month is going to be, you know, really about, about coming into your own, like coming into your expression, coming into your self-expression, into your creation, and really kind of sharing it as a source of wisdom, you know, really kind of sharing what you are learning um, about your deeper truths and your emotions and bringing it into higher states of spiritual awareness, conscious awareness, creative awareness, 
and using that as a source of wisdom so you can help other people on their path because Sagittarius season is still about learning and education and philosophy. So it's very much a it's very much a sign of, of higher education and teaching others. Um, and also something that I did not mention because we are still very much restricted. Sagittarius is also about um, long distance travel, meeting new people. Um, we are still restricted on that at the moment. So it could also be a good time to take a, a little mini vacation in, you know, you know, it's kind of like going on a spiritual journey or taking an adventure within. So really getting in touch, in touch with your inner wisdom. Okay, your inner wisdom and what it is you want to share with the world, you know, really kind of start thinking about what you want to create and what you want to then share as knowledge to others. So I'll start pulling up some tarot cards to see what we got going on. We have Eight of Cups. This is going to be Saturn and Pisces. This is about walking away from that which no longer fulfills you emotionally and creating your own path. Like really blossoming, and it's falling under the blossoming oracle card. So really about blossoming into your own um, vision of your path and where you want to go, and what you want to create for the future. We also have Ten of Wands. This is another Saturn card. This is Saturn and Sagittarius. This talks about burdens. This talks about um, being overwhelmed and, and almost like carrying the world on your shoulder, almost carrying a little bit too much inside, okay? So there's definitely going to be, I feel, a need to release this, a need to... You know, when we start to hold too much inside of us and we're not sharing it with other people and we're not allowing ourselves to be part of a greater community where we can express ourselves, where we can say what we feel and say what we think, it really starts to feel heavy on us. Like there's really no need to hold all that inside and to carry all that inside uh, with you. Uh, when there's a greater community of people just waiting to... Um, to hear what you have to say, and also to feel inspired to express themselves, you know, because, you know, maybe a lot of people could, might not want to say how they're feeling or something. So, yeah, so that's pretty big. And then we have the Ten of Cups. Wow, two Ten Cups in a row. We have two Pisces cards. This is Mars, your planet, Mars in Pisces. Um, so this is, you know, it's, it seems pretty clear that you just want, that the path that you want to create for yourself is that of emotional fulfillment. You know, you want, oh, maybe you're carrying on so many burdens because you think that is what is going to get you on your, um, that is what is going to bring you that emotional fulfillment, that happiness. The Ten of Cups is all about bliss, like pure bliss, happiness. It's, you know, having the home, having the wife or the husband, having the, the family, the kids, and just being happy, being blissful. Obviously, you know, if you're not a conventional kind of person and you're not into the whole marriage and kids thing, like whatever the case may be, whatever it is that makes you happy, just having your home and having all your friends having your dogs, your cats, whatever the case may be, whatever it is that makes you happy, that brings you bliss. This is, you know, Sagittarius season is going to really bring that into a higher state of awareness. Uh, like, what does that look like for you? You know, it's really about kind of um, bringing yourself into this energy of, of, of feeling and asking yourself what that looks like for you and what it is, how how you want to go about obtaining that. And that leads us to the creation card, the Oracle card. So it's kind of asking you like, okay, well, how are, like, what are you going to do to create that for yourself? So now we have the death card. Okay. So there's definitely a sense of transformation. There's probably something in your life that, that needs to go. Okay. Probably this is a Scorpio card. So there's probably something in your life that needs to go. There's something that you need to acknowledge that's dragging you down and not really doing it for you. Um, there is a sense that something does need to come to an end in order for this new path to unfold. 
um, so you can get on your creative journey towards the fulfillment that you seek. Um, this death card could also be something inside of you that needs to die, you know, like a part of you that you just need to let go of that you haven't fully accepted yet. Like I said, with us just coming out of Scorpio season right now, uh, we do tend to carry, carry a lot of unresolved emotions with us as, you know, as the wheel turns and as we move into other seasons, the energy, you know, needs to kind of clear itself out. So there could definitely be a lot of, um, there could be some rebirth kind of happening for you this month where you're really clearing out some older energies so you can make way for newer energies. And then we have the Two of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles is Jupiter and Capricorn. So this is kind of about like juggling a couple different tasks. You know, maybe you, um, if you are working right now, maybe you have like a home project that you're working on. And then you also have your, um, your side job or a job that you are, you know, and you're trying to balance out the two. You know, there could be some, there's some kind of duality going on here in reference to projects, in reference to finances. <coughs> okay, um, and balancing that out. But there is this sense that something needs to be released. So even within that, you know, there might be a little bit of, um, I don't want to say discomfort, but within that fact that you are kind of juggling a couple of different things, um, it might start to, feel, it might feel a little uncomfortable. It might give you a little bit of anxiety, not too much, just like a little bit. And there's a sense that something underlying inside of you is kind of forcing you to start releasing something. So it's not as just, so it's not, so it's a little bit more comfortable for you. It's not like so discomforting. And then we have the five of pentacles and this is Mercury and Taurus. Okay. So, um, so there could be some maybe like financial struggles. Maybe you're worried that if you don't do enough or if you stop, I mean, we are in a very odd time in, uh, in the world. So you could be feeling like, well, if you don't stay on top of this, if you don't stay on top of these projects, if you don't keep doing this, then, you know, money won't be as fruitful. Or I feel like this is kind of like a fear, you know, like you don't want me, you don't want to be homeless, you know, you don't want to be financially restricted, you want to be comfortable. Um, but, hmm. But I'm feeling like this is, I feel like this is something you, this fear, this might be like a deep fear, but I'm, I'm getting the sense that it, you need to let go of that fear and just, um, how do I explain it? I'm getting the sense that you need to let, like face the fear, not, okay, so face that fear and then let go of it, okay? Like find wisdom in it. It seems easier said than done. Because I feel like you wanna, hmm. Okay, let, I'm going to keep pulling these cards because there is something heavy about this energy. And I want to come back to it just to see how everything wraps up in the end, okay? Um, I should probably start using clarifiers. I'm just not used to it yet. Okay, so for wisdom, we have the tower. This is your energy. This is Mars energy. So some big transformations. Okay, and then we have the Ace of Pentacles. This is why I wanted to start pulling more cards. This is a new beginning in finances and in money and that type of stuff. This is Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. And then we have the Princess of Pentacles. This is, uh, this is the, similar to the Page of Pentacles. Also Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. So this is, this outcome is really good. So 
Okay, so basically the way that this is showing is like it's going to start to, it might start to feel like you're going to go through some financial hardships or you're going to really start. I feel like, I feel like what needs to happen over here is you really need to look at the reality of your situation. Okay. Look at the reality of what you're going through, of where you're at. Okay. And really let it, it, it might not feel good to accept the reality but use it as a source of like wisdom to take you to that next step, okay? Because there is going to be a big trans transformative kind of thing that you're going to go through where it's going to feel like your world is kind of like crumbling down a little bit, um, where it feels like things around you are kind of crumbling down and there's going to be some, I feel like there's going to be some fear, a little bit of just like discomfort, but it's going to bring in a new beginning, okay? It's going to bring in, in a new beginning in opportunities of to make money and of stability and of creation. So, so, and then you're going to be able to, you're really going to be able to figure out what it is you want to manifest financially in regards to your stability but I feel like there needs to be some kind of breakdown. There needs to be some kind of internal uh, you, reckoning. There needs to be something within you that you face that you need to understand on a deeper level in regards to the projects that you're working on, like something or in regards to the job that you have. And there's going to be kind of a breakdown of that understanding so you can, so you can see with a clear eye and so you can see with higher knowledge and higher awareness exactly what it is and exactly how you want to manifest your financial stability okay this doesn't mean that you're gonna like just because you get the five of pentacles that doesn't mean you're just gonna like suddenly everything you're going to lose everything. Okay. That's not necessarily the case. There is a death, go there is an ending going on here. So maybe you started on a project. Maybe there's something you've been working on. Maybe you need to put one thing down and focus more on something else. And that's bringing you some kind of like discomfort because maybe you were relying on that one thing, hoping that that one thing was going to take you in a certain direction but it turns out that it's this other thing that's actually going to help you for right now so that's kind of the best way to explain it so it's just kind of about aligning yourself with your with the truth you know aligning yourself with your truth um and then bringing that truth into physical manifestation okay and that's going to be really important for you this month, especially before we head into Capricorn season, which is going to be all about hard work and um, and social structures and social status and all that type of stuff for 2021. Um, so this is this is my reading for you, Aries. I hope this reading helped. I am going to be checking in with you guys mid December just to see. You. I'm going to be checking in with all the signs just to see. It's kind of like my new flow of how I'm doing YouTube right now. Um, I'm really, really focusing on the spiritual journey, on the spiritual path, on spiritual guidance, on getting to know yourself better, on learning about yourself better, um, and just kind of being on this journey uh, with you guys and helping you through it. So, so yeah, so come back from mid-December and we'll see where we're at, okay? Bye.